However, there are some predictable places that actually give you a specific sound. Let's say you've got a Marshall amp and you want to get it really tightly focused. Take the three M160, 421, 57, and put them right dead center on the cone on one side and put the 67 on the other side. Now what do you do? Now let's presume that you have a nice console to go into. What kind of console would, would be your preference? Anybody? The MIT. Uh, I would go, I would up the ante and I would say a, well API is a very good choice, yes, it's a fantastic console and I use them a lot, but I would say a vintage knee board uh, that has 1081s, and why? Because the 1081s are four band and you can do a lot of carving with that, plus the, there is nothing that sounds quite like a vintage knee mic pre, nothing, in my opinion. And now we recorded the whole band with the drums and the bass and the guitars and all that lovely stuff with fabulous mic pre's. I get the EQ and I get the compression on those guitars mixed as we're going to tape. I make the commitment. Don't bugger around to it afterwards. You're, gonna, you're wasting your time. Make the commitment. Get it right. Right. That's it. Yes, sir. Speaking about uh, uh, Neve, right? Um, I was wondering why Helios was the musician's choice when Neve was around at the time. What, what are the major differences? And I understand there was a data mix at um, Electric Lady that was made specifically for Hendrix. What was that console like and what was your opinion of it? You, well, you've got three questions in a row there. All right, very quickly. The Helios console at Olympic, which we got the knobs from, was, in my opinion, one of the greatest consoles ever made for rock and roll. It distorted like crazy, very fast. You have to be very careful with it. But the sonic quality of that thing, the crunch that you've got from it, is unbeatable. Lustrophone transformers, uh, that just, uh, that mic pre is golden. The next favorite would be, um, like I said, the Neve. Now, Neve at that point was in competition with Helios, and they, Rupert Neve actually saw the console that this was taken from and started to change his design to match that. So there you are. And the data, the data mix board uh, wasn't what well, it was built. I helped put it together in the sense that I laid out the specs for it. But it was the biggest piece of crap you've ever heard in your life. Uh, I hated that damn thing, but there you are. All right. How are we doing? Are we around for time? Are we? Uh, the gentleman over there on the stairs. Yes, sir. Yeah, hi. Um I'm just wondering how the project with Nick Hague is doing. Any closer to fruition? Nick Hague, who's mixing a film. I don't remember the gentleman. Uh, remind me what the film is. It's a, a film of Pithy. Nothing to do with me, mate. I've never even heard of the gentleman. He's probably going to get sued tomorrow. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, there, there, are, there, are, some, there are some projects in the wind uh, and in the wings. In fact, all right, I'll tell you very quickly. There is a Hendrix album that I've been in the middle of making for the last year. I'm not finished with it yet, but I don't know if you know that Universal is no longer releasing the Hendrix material, but Sony is. And this album is going to be called Anthology. What's I supposed to say? It doesn't matter. Okay. It's all right. Um, and we're about 30 songs deep into it, and none of these songs have ever been heard before. So you figure it out. And I could not have done it without the Waves plugins. And that's not a plug for these guys. Dead serious. Like I was saying before. Which ones? Ah. Hold it for ballgame. Um, well, we all know what the Waves plugins can do in terms of the decrackling, and debugging, and denoising. That's the area that I'm using in it. But then, what I found over the last six months or so, I'm using more and more and more plugins while I'm mixing, because it's half in the box and half out the box. The chain of command is, so to speak, analog recording, dump into Pro Tools using the Burls, work in Pro Tools 24 bit 96K, bring it back through like an API ball, which is what I'm using right now, mixed to half inch tape, 15 IPS Dolby SR, take the 15 IPS Dolby SR half inch, 
run it through the borough back into Pro Tools again, and that's the chain of command. That's that's how we work it. But the plugins that I'm able to use, it gives me a huge sonic palette that I can choose from, which I never ever had before. And I'm doing things that I was never able to do. Um, so yeah, you're, you're going to hear some really really cool things. I have to tell you a quick story. Anybody want to hear a quick story about Woodstock and how we yeah, yeah. Uh, managed to? <laughs> find this about three years ago I got involved with doing this Hendrix re-release for Woodstock and in the research when we were in the in the Warner Brothers library we found 10 hours of unreleased material the band the Grateful Dead Janis Joplin all this stuff was sitting there in the vaults nobody had done anything with it so we decided to put together a rough cut of one band track, one Janice, and uh, I think one airplane track. And we presented it to the Warner's executives, and they went, wow, man, that's so cool. We've got the 40th anniversary coming up, duh. <laughs> <laughs> well, so anyway, two years in the making, and we mixed it in 5-1. I did all the transfers of the original one-inch A track. By the way, it was only seven tracks, not eight. What was on the eighth track, anybody? Time code. Time code, exactly. Well, it wasn't exactly time code. It was 60 cycles, um, pulse sync, that's what it was called. We had to use a resolver, and that's a whole other story. But in this process of finding all these tracks, we found this one track of Carlos Santana. Totally and utterly unusable. Why? Okay. We went to the tape, and it is so out of tune. It is the first song. It's called Evil Ways, right? Mm -hmm. And I figured, oh, Christ, how am I going to do this? Anyway, so I hired a guitar player, and we went in, and bar by bar, fixed all the guitar parts that were out of tune, sent it to Carlos, and he called me and said, hey, man, I can't believe I'm playing like that. What happened? <laughs> so I said, well, look, do you want to do the, you know, do the right thing and fix it? Because... The downbeat of the solo, halfway through the song, to the end of the song, he manages to pull the guitar in tune and does a great solo. I wanted to keep that. But the first half was shit. I mean, excuse me, crap. <laughs> um, so we go up to San Francisco and, and we've got the same amp, the same guitar and everything, and he starts playing. It's an SG and he's pulling the bloody thing all out too. And I said, oh, Carlos, just back off, you know, play it light. Yeah, I forgot about that, man. Okay, so he plays, he gets a solo. It's in about an hour. And then he says, do you know what really happened that day? Yeah. I said, well, tell me. He says, we were supposed to go on at 6 o'clock in the evening. He says, in the morning, the whole band dropped acid. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, we, <laughs> so he says, at 2 o'clock, they call us and said, you've got to go on now. I just, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so so he, they get on stage and he says, dear God. Please let me play in tune, man, any time, and I promise I'll never take another drug. I lied. <laughs> so, so he gets on stage and he says, he says to me, man, I picked up the guitar, man, and I'm looking at the strings. There were snakes coming in the strings! <laughs> oh. no, that was the story. I think you like that. <laughs> oh, Wayne's plugins, yeah, there you go. Yeah. We did a lot of Wayne's plugins. <laughs> yes, sir. Will you be recording any of the seminars at AES? So we can see him. Oh, God forbid, no. I've got my own problems. No. Any more questions? In the back, or the sides, in the front. Yes, sir? How much of the uh, Waves plugins did you use to uh, remaster all the Woodstock stuff as opposed to using analog? Did you have that decision? And you it's about, to... well, I'm going to say, like I said, about 50 50, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on the song. But a lot of it. I mean, it. Because the plugins are great, they work. Are you always going to be an analog diehard, or do you think there'll be a point? I'm always going to be a person who thinks <coughs> that I can make it better. And if the Waves plugins give me an extra leg up and gives me an extra tool to work with, I'm going to use it. If it didn't sound good, I wouldn't be working with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it sounded like crap, I'd say, ah. Oh. It's a lovely word beginning with B and ending in S. <laughs> so there. Are we done? <laughs> oh, one more question.